don't leave. I know it's the break, but I'm on in the break now, so please don't leave. Stay with me. Get a, get a coffee later, honestly. All right, you can leave. Thank you for staying, who is still sitting down. Right, my name's John Myers. Um, I'm going to talk to you about all things mobile in the world that we live in today, because everything that we do evolves around our phones in a lot of respects. So hopefully after the next 25 minutes, you guys can really get a feel for the things that you can do. As was alluded to, I am the wingshot guy. Tweet me, hash wingshot. I'll tweet you back, I'll say, have a safe trip, a little smiley face, three airplanes, and so on and so on. And more importantly, I founded my own company last year after working for lots of different organizations for about 20 years um, within the, the search industry. Obviously, it was great to win Search Personality of the Year as well. And I've been around a while. I used to be an SEO guy, I still am. I ran some of the first PPC campaigns when Google launched AdWords at the time when it first came out, back in 1999. Great. <laughs> Moving on. I've just been around a while. That's how it works kind of thing. So mobile absolutely runs our world. It really, really does. And Google is our world. I think everybody in that, that's in this room today probably goes on Google every single day of their life, more than once, constantly as on Google. So Google is this organic thing that started to grow. It's hard to believe that back in 1998, their first year was a three and a half million searches. You know, there's now 5.4 billion effectively going on every single day effectively. So it's tons. It really has evolved in a massive, massive way. But mobile and Google is an incredibly powerful partnership. So let's talk about some numbers. Because I love numbers. I like to give stats. Feel free to throw them out there, take pictures, tweet them, do whatever you guys want to do with them. But Google has acquired 224 companies between 2001 and 2019. It's a phenomenal amount of companies. You can go and read about it on Wikipedia. This is what it kind of looks like when you look at the money they've spent. And there's big ones in here. There's notable things like DoubleClick, 3.1 billion. Motorola, they bought that for 12.5 billion. About three years later, they sold it back to somebody for 1 billion. Not a good deal, that one, let's be honest. Then things like YouTube, 1.7 billion. But I want to talk about one acquisition that they made in all of those acquisitions. And it was this one. Google acquired Android technology for 50 million in 2005. 50 million. How many people have Android phones? I can't really see you. So somebody up there go, woo! I've got an Android phone. Screw you, Apple. How many people have got iPhones? Woo! Yeah, but 50 million for Android technologies. Android now powers 70% of all of the world's smartphones. That's a good deal. And because they did that, and mobile penetration continues to grow massively across everything. I think it's amazing when you can have penetration of like 123% and 126%. That means there's more phones in that part of the world than there is people. Who has two phones? There's quite a few of you got two phones. Who's got three phones? Who's the, you got three phones? You're doing something dodgy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got a phone for this, I've got a phone for that, and I have this phone. But anyway, 97% of consumers use the internet whilst researching local advertising. Google drives 96% of mobile smartphone traffic. Up to 70% of web traffic happens on a mobile device. Consumers now spend more than five hours a day on their smartphone. Who spends more than five hours a day on their smartphone? You all do, you're just lying. Western Europe, 40% of transactions now occur via portable devices. And mobile devices drive over 52% of web traffic and account for nearly two of every three minutes spent online. To the point now where Google, on the 22nd of May this year, totally re-engineered how Google looks on a mobile phone. They gave you the little pins, the little ads. I was going to start pointing down here, but you can't see the screens, can you? They gave you the little pins and the ads on the sides. They made it look a lot more you know, consumable for mobile users. Absolutely need to mobile optimize or die. So I'm going to go through four different areas. I'm going to start with voice search. Amazon is absolutely winning in this world. And Amazon is going to continue to win in this world because we all sit at home and go, hey, Alexa, please tell me what the weather's going to be like outside. Why don't you just look out the window? <laughs> but that is what goes on. Hey, Alexa, add potatoes to my shopping list. It's kind of how it works. But Amazon is absolutely leading the world in that space. But for me, the issue with that is, because I'm kind of, I guess I'm an SEO and I like search and everything like that, but I think of things in a commercial way as well. The things that are happening via voice search at the minute aren't particularly marketable commercial in some respects, 
you know, and it's playing music. Shopping is just effectively adding something to a shopping list. Home automation, turning the lights on and off, and so on and so on and so on. So you've got to wonder about it, but people who use voice search are incredibly compelled to get involved with it in the sense that they are very comfortable to make a purchase. The bit that really gets me is that they're also comfortable for transferring money via a smart speaker. Hey, Alexa, transfer 1,000 pounds to here. I just don't get that at the minute. I really don't. It's making this guy very happy. This is Jeff Bezos, founder of uh, Amazon. I like this picture, so I didn't take this picture out. It's a bit of an old one. He is the world's richest man, and at this point, he was worth 93 billion. He's now worth 149 billion. Woo! What do you do with $149 billion? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, for Jeff, he's going to get a little bit poorer because he's actually got divorced. Jeff, from Mackenzie, his wife. Mackenzie started Amazon with Jeff back in the day. So Mackenzie has quite a big shareholding in, uh, in Amazon. So Jeff's numbers are going to go down, and Mackenzie is going to become the third richest woman in the world. It's just stunning how this things, these things happen. But it, it's phenomenal how Amazon has gone forward, and Amazon continues to evolve. And I think these guys are incredibly key to what's going to happen in our industry over the next two to three years. So absolutely keep an eye on what they're doing from an advertising point of view. 80% of answers delivered via Google Voice Assistant, which is unbelievable, and 60% of the featured snippets results, how the results have featured snippets. And this is incredibly important as an SEO to think about what is going on here. And I'll come back to talk about this in a little bit longer. One in five searches via mobile devices and one voice, and they reckon 50% of that will occur by 2020. I, I question whether that's going to be the case in some respects, but it is incredibly important to actually adopt and understand where voice search is going. One thing to do watch out for, though, for the PPC guys out there, any string query string longer than 10 words, and if you start looking in your analytics accounts, and you, you will start to see that people are putting together these long queries, which tend to be voice searches. So anything over 10, ignores negatives. So as voice search starts to build, you're going to have to keep an eye on that sort of thing from a PPC point of view. Commercially viable yet? Nah. If somebody said to me, invest time in PPC or invest time in voice search, go the PPC way. Voice search is kind of here. It's going to get here. It's not here yet. But it's definitely one to keep an eye on from a mobile perspective. It's the mobile first index. I talked a bit about this last year. I just thought I'd give you a little update as to what's going on in the world of Google from that point of view. As I say, oh, shit, I'm wearing the same stuff. <laughs> Hang on. How, yeah? No? Like that? Damn it. I knew I should have worn a different shirt. But there was loads of Bastion. Bastion's wearing the same stuff. Where's he gone? He's got the same stuff on as well. <laughs> uh, we have more stuff in our wardrobe than I have on here, but yes. Um, we, people like us talked about this a heck of a lot last year, and it's still evolving. Google has obviously come out and talked about the algorithm and how they're going to move towards primarily using the mobile version of the algorithm for sure, and structured data is going to play a big part on, in that. And when you think about it, it was Gary Isles that came out just over two and a half years ago now and talked about this is going to be a big thing, and it really, really is, and it's starting to gather momentum. So when we think about it now, Google's mobile index powers half of Google's search results now, as we see it. So actually, everything is moving towards the mobile environment away from the desktop. And they keep us up to date with it all. They really, really do. But I think there was one notable thing which they announced on the Webmaster Central blog, literally um, you know, last month, was basically this key part, which actually, if you haven't picked it up, now they're talking about any new website to Google. So any website that you launch that is new to Google, as of July the 1st, will be basically enabled by default for mobile first. So they really are picking the pace up and moving us through into that mobile environment for sure. So it's definitely here to stay. It's going to get bigger. It's a bit like Manhattan. So let's think about mobile SEO. Let's start drilling into actually the things that we do and the things that make a difference to what we do for our customers or for ourselves, ultimately. It is the age-old bottle. It is kind of getting there. I want to be top. I need to be top. And in some respects on mobile, you do, because the environment that you're dealing with is a lot you know, more combative than actually the desktop environment, for sure. So when you think about the websites that we have, there's three different key types. So there's responsive, there's dynamic, there's separate. Who has a responsive website? 
We can do a Mexican wave like that. Hang on, right? Who's got a responsive website? Oh, shit, it worked. That's brilliant. I love it. Were you guys well done? Awesome. You got nothing to worry about. Responsive is just the way forward. Anybody got a dynamic website? Nobody's going to own up. We'll get the separate one. We'll see where we go with that one. If I can give you one hint on the dynamic site, is you need to get the varied HTTP header into the site so Google, when it crawls the site, can understand whether you've got a mobile site or a desktop site. It's an incredibly easy thing to do. How many devs are in the room? Let's say one dev. This is great. I can slag devs. It's brilliant. So when you go to your developer and you're asking, can you please put on the HTTP varied header onto my website, please? It's kind of like asking a plumber about a quote for a boiler, and they kind of go, it's a big job. It's a big, big job. It's going to take months. I'm right, aren't I, Dev? That's how it goes. He's nodding. Five minute job. Get it in there. Do it. Make it happen. If not, give them my number. Tell them to call me. We'll sort it. And if you have a separate site, obviously there's got a lot of things that you need to do and understand because it needs to basically, you need to do some mirroring. So the things that I'm going to talk about for the next 10 minutes or so will involve actually what you need to do to make sure that you've got parity between your websites. Absolutely, we've got to nail down the CTR. One of the biggest factors on Google looking in the mobile environment is, is CTR, obviously, and we'll come up and talk about some other ones, but you've got to get that one nailed down. You can compare desktop and mobile within GSE. It's an incredibly quick thing to do, and you should have a look at it, because with it being a big ranking factor, you start to see things like URLs getting chopped, um, there's more ads within the mobile environment. It's more competitive, you know, combative out there. And really do nail down and think about CTR, and GSC will help you with that. Ultimately, make all of the elements crawlable and indexable. It goes without saying, but it's something I'd just like to throw out there and highlight for sure. When we think about links, internal and external, do you now have equivalent internal linking on mobile and desktop? The answer really is ultimately no but you basically need to make sure that it's incredibly accessible to the search engines and your users. So when you're thinking about actually putting your sites together and structuring your sites, the ultimate thing would be responsive, but if you have to have the separate piece going on, make sure you're mirroring what you're doing within the desktop environment for years into the mobile environment, because that will make a big, big difference on how you rank on mobile. When we think about external linking on the link graph, everybody kind of looks at it and kind of goes, well, I've got my mobile sites, I've got maybe AMP pages, I've got, you know, the desktop site, and they all have inbound links to them. So when you look at that from a point of view of how you visualize it, you know, what we're seeing here is we're flipping away from Google indexing what was historically the desktop page to indexing the mobile page first. So the theory would be there's an incredible amount of link cleanup that's going to be required. There really isn't, because actually, just via the rel alternate and rel colonical tags, Google will mop that up for you as long as you've got in place the mobile versions of those tags and they will deal with that for you. So the thing about moving links around or having to redirect anything like that, no, nope, don't worry about it. It's all kind of in the game. Structured data is absolutely going to play a big, big part. You know, we alluded to it earlier on with some of those slides that I mentioned with the research in. This has to make a big, big difference to you. And Google gives you an incredible amount of different levers to pull. Things like the featured snippets, top stories, local packs, the whole mix. And I've just popped that research back in there again. When you're thinking that 60% of the results come from featured snippets in the mobile environment and the voice search environment, it's a big thing to get right. So absolutely take the time to understand the levers that you have to play with within the SERP results. Let's talk speed. Speed is incredibly important. Speed in the mobile world, because not only obviously good connection in the Wi-Fi, 5G is coming along supposedly. I was reading something about 5G this morning. 4G is pretty damn good as it stands today, but speed is incredibly important. Google gives you a tool to look at it. So if you haven't had a look at how your site performs from a point of view of speed, go to Think with Google, go to this URL, whack your website in. It's wonderful. You watch these little spinny things kind of doing this little thing while you kind of wait for Google to come back. So I thought I'd uh, have a little look into, uh, I did the Premier in next door. I had a little look. Any SEOs in the room Premier in? No? Sorry if you're working on it. Google came back and it said it was slow. It took three and a half seconds, which in the big scheme of things isn't bad, but ultimately it's slow in the context of mobile, so Google will devalue you from a ranking point of view. So Premier in has a little bit of work to do on that, but it's a quick, easy thing just to test what's going on. Because when you start to get into numbers like this, as you can see, at three and a half seconds, the probability of bounce rate increases by 
which I just think is unbelievable. I love the fact that in one to 10 seconds, basically 123%, somebody's kind of come to your website and gone, wait, there's a website. I don't like it. They leave. And then they come back again, because it's at 123%. All in 10 seconds, so people go, yep, no, yep, no, maybe. Get the site quick. And I think there's elements that you need to think about from a speed point of view. You know, when you think about speed index and you think about time to first byte, so when, we're, you know, when you're crawling your website and looking at how well it performs in that sense, all of these different things occur, and Google gives you these numbers across the different industry standards. So the black, uh, the red line that you can see up there is kind of what is best practice as Google sees it. And you can see at the moment most industry sectors are massively over. And obviously things like automotive and travel, which have a lot of stuff on the website, will be over in some respects. And I think where the issue lies is in what they call the average request count. So best practice on Google is about 50. And it, what it means is that when it builds the web page and it builds in the images and it takes in the code and it puts everything together, the same best practice would be 50 different elements to a page. As you can see in these scenarios, they're well over 100. And this will slow it down. So if you're developing your mobile site, try and work on actually getting this request count within the parameters of what Google's looking for. So thinking about the SEO, key things. Optimize your JS render, for sure, your CSS delivery. Anything you can do to preload some of that into the top of the page um, will absolutely benefit you. Leverage caching, optimize images, and implement a CDN if you've got a big site, for sure. I mean, I could stand here and talk about these things for a long time, but obviously I'm tight on time. Absolutely mobile UX. I mean, this could be a complete talk in its own right, but one quick thing you should have a look at if you do it today or when you get back to the office, it's just in Chrome. Just get in Chrome, device mode, open up Chrome, right click on it, and go to inspect. Chrome can then actually will then replicate your site into different environments for iPads, iPhones, you know, the whole mix. So you can actually start to see where the buttons lie on the page, because I'll absolutely, you know, I'd bet on it that what you see on the desktop for your call to actions is probably hidden on the mobile and has disappeared down the page. And you want to get those call to actions and the click-through rates further up on the page. So it's just a quick, easy fix just to go and do it. We've all got a Chrome browser. Have a quick look, see what you see. So when we think about mobile PPC, the final component within the whole place that we play, and I should say I wear two hats as an SEO and a PPC guy, organic really is getting pushed down on the mobile. You know, when you search for anything at the moment, Everything's getting shoved by, because obviously paid ads in some respects. In February 2016, Google kind of started the process of going towards the mobile piece. They removed the right-hand PPC ads and started to load them into the main deck. And we saw the introduction of obviously the expanded PPC ads. So when an impact point of view, one great piece of research that was done on this, and a company that embraced it was Wayfair, um, who I think are just fantastic in the mobile world. They reacted to this when it happened. You can see that from an organic point of view, because PPC started to dominate, there was a 25% click share drop on desktop and 55% on mobile, which is stunning. I mean, it's, it's a big change overnight. And earlier on this year, this thing popped up on Twitter. And everybody's kind of going, ooh, what's going on here? Wow, Google's doing some testing, something like that. And these guys kind of threw it out there. But they had 11 ads and two organic ads within the Google listing which was just unbelievable. It was just add, 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 add. Oh, there was a couple of organics then, add, add, add. Then Google kind of came out and said, oops, that was a mistake. Sorry about that. But when they do that, they're testing. They're doing something. They're up to something. But when you come to the PPC for mobile as well now, there are so many different ad formats that we can choose from and so many different ad formats that we can try. Obvious one, call extensions. Try it. If you haven't got it in place, run with it. It'll work. This one, at first, didn't get off the ground because Google basically said you needed a mobile phone to take the text messages on. So if I was running a campaign and somebody texted me on the campaign, I had to have a phone specifically for it. That was never going to work. But now, basically, the, if you text via the ad, it delivers it to an email address, and then you, you can respond via the email address, and we'll put it back to a text on that person's phone. So a lot more viable. So message extensions is definitely worth a look. Local extensions, absolutely worth play with. App extensions, goes without saying, mobile environment, mobile phone, app downloads will work really, really well for you as a company. Local ads are brilliant on mobiles because it's within that actual, you know, the geolocation piece. And Google's really starting to evolve these and give you the, uh, the ability to put your branded message on the, on the map as well kind of thing. And they're starting to roll out more and more into different countries around the world. Promoted pins, to actually promote yourself out there on the maps as well. They're giving you all those levers to play with. 
to the point where obviously hotel deals with their knowledge panels, which have been on desktop for a while, but now sit within the mobile environment as well. So you can get on there, book your hotels, get your deals, do the things that you need to do. Buy stuff, shop. You know, for years, Google came out, and I can remember talking 10 years ago about Google being the new landing page, because Google originally kind of went, we're going to give you the results, and we're going to get you off our website as quick as we possibly can. Google is now going, hey, why leave? Stay, buy, look at your products, get your price, make your purchase. So actually being able to do that in the Google environment on a mobile is incredibly powerful, to the point where you can actually have your own local store on your mobile for your company now. So Google's really trying to make you stay within paid search. And as you can see, it really starts to evolve the ability to bring out those you know, messages and actually get those products and pricing and everything all into that particular place. And there's just some examples on the screen here. Final few slides, just to think about it in that sense, is where could they go with this? I mean, Google has always been search. And, you know, when I used to work agency side, it was just, you know, you'd sit in there with the brand teams and they'd be doing all these like, wonderful things around TV ads and stuff like that. I'd just kind of, I'd buy keywords. I put text online. It's not particularly sexy in any way or anything like that. But now within the Google environment, this is something which they're testing, which could come out soon, is that, and this is on a mobile, is vehicle advertising, actually taking that brand message, that vehicle promotion that you see on the things like TV or on YouTube, and actually bringing that to the SERP results. It's starting to become the ability to run brand campaigns and track them incredibly well. To things like visual site links as well, to start to see that environment pulling into the mobile phone too. Absolutely, you will dominate the top of mobile search with PPC at the moment. SEO is getting shoved down further and further. But I think it's important that the two guys go hand in hand and work with each other. And ultimately, just make sure that you guys define it, track it, and report on it. Because we can in the world that we live in. It's incredibly transparent in everything that we see. So without that, mobile optimize or die. I'm going to keep saying that. Embrace it, because mobile is going to be where we're going over the next sort of four to five years for sure. And it's accelerating away from the desktop at speed, even in just the last year. So thank you very much. Thanks for hanging around in the coffee break and having a chat with me. And I'll try to wear a different shirt next time. Thank you.